Hello. Welcome. I invite you to take a deep breath. As you inhale, the muscles of your diaphragm increase the volume of your lungs. Increasing volume decreases pressure and air from outside rushes in. The process is reversed when we exhale. <sighs> How calming. How simple. But the macroscopic simplicity of PV equals NRT actually belies the random and chaotic microscopic view of gas motion. The air does not rush into your lungs because of some dusty equation. Rather, gas molecules are constantly slamming into each other and slamming into you at nearly 900 miles per hour. The microscopic world of gases is like drunk babies playing three-dimensional bumper cars at high speed. Scientists call this view of gases the kinetic molecular theory. And in this lesson, we will see how the four tenets of kinetic molecular theory explain the mathematical simplicity of the gas laws. Recall from section 2.1, the difference between a scientific theory and a scientific law. A law describes a universal truth and it describes it mathematically. However, a law does not explain why that truth is so truthy. That is the job of a theory. For example, atomic theory explains why masses don't change during a chemical reaction. Atomic theory states that chemical reactions come from the rearrangement of indivisible and indestructible atoms. The ideal gas law describes any ideal gas using just four variables, but it doesn't explain why gases behave ideally. Explaining something is the job of a theory. In this case, it's the job of kinetic molecular theory, which describes gases as high speed bouncing balls. There are five postulates of kinetic molecular theory. First, we need to see gases as a large number of particles in constant random motion, such as in this animation. In fact, this animation is about two trillion times less chaotic than gases in real life as it has been slowed down considerably. Second, we assume that the volume of the gas particles is negligible compared to the size of the container. Third, we assume that gases neither attract nor repel each other or the walls of the container. Fourth, the total kinetic energy of the gas particles is constant. In other words, we aren't losing any energy due to friction during collisions. Lastly, the average kinetic energy of the gas particles is proportional to their temperature. When these five postulates are true, we call the gases ideal gases. Gases behave ideally in most conditions that humans are used to, but we'll see in the next section that these assumptions break down at very high pressures and very low temperatures. Throughout the rest of this lesson, we'll explain these three relationships in the ideal gas law using kinetic molecular theory. However, first we need to understand a microscopic view of pressure and temperature. Kinetic molecular theory states that the pressure comes from the collisions between the gas particles and the walls of the container. In this view, an increase in the frequency of collisions will lead to an increase in the pressure of the gas. Likewise, an increase in the speed of the particles will lead to an increase in pressure as well. Kinetic molecular theory states that gas particles move at a range of speeds but that the average speed of a gas particle is dictated by the temperature. As we increase the temperature, we increase the average speed. For example, the blue line on this graph represents the speed of gas particles at zero degrees Celsius, and the red line represents the same gas at 100 degrees. Notice that both lines have particles moving quickly and both lines have particles moving slowly but the hot red line has more particles moving quickly than the cold blue line. 
Already, we can explain one of the gas laws using KM theory, the relationship between temperature and pressure. As we increase temperature, gas particles start moving faster, which means they collide with the walls of the container more often and with more force, which we detect as an increase in pressure. If you've ever been hit by a bus, you know that larger objects have more kinetic energy than a smaller object at the same speed. The same is true for gas particles. Smaller gases must move faster in order to have the same kinetic energy as heavier gas particles. If we plot the distribution of speeds for many gases at the same temperature, we see that lighter gases like hydrogen move faster on average than heavier gases like oxygen. Particle mass affects the rate of diffusion of particles within a container. Diffusion is the movement of particles from high concentration to low concentration. Lighter gases, because they move faster, diffuse faster than heavier gases. Let's apply this concept in a practice problem. Two chemicals created by decaying flesh are the aptly named putrescine and cadaverine. Suppose your chemistry teacher wishes to demonstrate the diffusion of gases by opening a jar of each at the front of the classroom. Which would you smell first? By looking at their molecular formulas, cadaverine is heavier by one carbon and two hydrogens. So the average speed of cadaverine is slower than putrescine. Putrescine would diffuse faster, reaching your poor nostrils quicker than cadaverine. Returning to our application of kinetic molecular theory to the ideal gas laws, we can also explain the inverse relationship between pressure and volume. If we decrease the volume of a container, the gas particles have less room to move around and they will collide with the walls of, of the container more. Thus, decreasing the volume increases the pressure. Notably, the molecules are not moving faster. They simply have less room to move around in, so they'll hit the sides more often. Although gases might seem calm on the surface, the microscopic view is like high-speed 3D bumper cars. In this lesson, we use kinetic molecular theory to explain the simplicity of the gas laws, especially the relationships between temperature, pressure, and volume. Let's test your understanding with three practice problems related to molecular speed. On this slide, we see the distribution of speeds of three samples of argon gas. Which of these samples is at the lowest temperature? Since temperature is directly related to kinetic energy, which is directly related to speed, we know that the slowest sample, sample A, is the coldest sample. Let's use the same graph, but this time, suppose each of these lines represents a different gas and all the gases are at the same temperature. Which gas has the lowest molar mass? Since these gases are at the same temperature, they all have the same kinetic energy. In order to have the same kinetic energy, light gases must move faster than heavy gases. So the gas with the lowest molar mass will be the fastest, which is gas number C. Same graph, but the last practice problem. Let's say this graph now represents the same gas at three different volumes. Which sample has the greatest pressure? The answer is that we don't know. Pressure does not affect particle speed. There is not enough information to determine which gas has the highest pressure. 